guys. Good afternoon. Your time check is already 1 p.m. So, in the Philippines, probably a.m. Today, I'm going to talk about my experience uh, visa interview. I had a little bit crazy experience and I'm going to talk about it. Let's sing a song full of hope, full of pain. Why don't you sing along, my friend? For it's our last refrain. Forever young, ever strong, ever brave. So, I just want to share it, and we all have different experience, but I want you to hear about my experience. Before that, I want to say that if you are going to have an interview appointment date you have to make sure that you have to have your medical result going there because i overheard when i was there that someone's go for their interview maybe they didn't search something about what they're gonna prepare they went there they don't have medical papers to show during interview so as people who have a visa interview appointment you have to have your medical result bring there for interview okay so my interview date was june 8 2021 6 30 a.m so early i my husband book a hotel to stay one night to go for interview the early so I got there like 6 a.m. and we have to queue and there is a guard at the embassy outside the embassy there is a guard that uh, want to know what's your appointment time so you have to have your appointment date schedule print out and also all your documents you have to bring them all but when you are at the queue we're on the line they have to guard have to check your appointment date and time because that's how they organize the line the queue so my advice is you have to have it because if you forget and there is someone who want to help you print it out but it's very expensive guys I had <laughs> I had like print out two papers that I forget to print out and what happened was I had to print it out in there and the people who was trying to help me, but it's a business so it's kind of expensive like a, what paper costs like 200 pesos so to avoid that you have to check all your papers if you have it all print out okay so when the guards say we go inside so I have to have those this 260 so they can check uh, what visa are you present I mean mine is IR1 visa is a spouse visa that yeah. married more than two years so uh, I'm in IR1 visa so you have to go inside there is a lot of chairs in there there are someone who assessed you where you want to see it where you have to wait so my experience was my husband <laughs> actually filled out and some of my information actually I did fill out some of my information in there but then like my husband was I don't know he just I'm not done actually and then he was submitted it and if he submitted you couldn't edit it at all so i was worried about that stuff because like i tried to edit but i couldn't do it 
So at pre-screening interview, there was a guy in there who interviewed me and he asked me about myself and I was working or if I was living outside the country, outside Philippines. So it was a chance that I say that, yeah. And he asked me about where and he asked me about the police clearance from Singapore because I was in, I was working in Singapore for five years. And I watched some videos and it says that I needed it, but in my um, case, of course, it didn't show that I needed it because my husband uh, submitted it. So just mark it no, uh, I didn't work outside the Philippines and submitted it. But I know that he will ask me that, so that is why I process it. That took uh, one month or so for them to deliver it to me. Fortunately, there is a lockdown, so I have more chance to process it. So I don't have to rush or something. So I get I get it ready with my interviews appointment. So when he asked me about my police clearance in Singapore, so I handed it to him. And he asked me to sit down and wait because he has to change <laughs> maybe he did my form the S260 form that I was working in Singapore and so I guess I waited like 15 minutes <laughs> I was wondering what's wrong but I think because they have to edit my information in that the S260 form after 15 minutes wait he called me again and asked about myself again and he asked me to go to uh, proceed for thumb printing. Uh, for thumb printing, you just have to put your passport in the window, just show them that you don't have to give them or something. They will ask us which finger we are going to uh, print. So after the thumb printing, go sit down and wait for our name to be called being called for a console interview it's like i was worried about it because I, they didn't call my name i was wondering why some applicant has been called already like i think they have to call like 10 10 by 10 like that and there is like another group being called for interview the console it's a final interview and then I'm not being called I was wondering why and then the guy who will assess maybe notice like why I'm not being called and then he asked me is your this 260 with you and I said yeah with me it's here and said why you didn't give it to them i said well they give it to me and i i don't know so i accept all the papers that they get back to me he say that you should give it to them and not handed it in there and sit down i said okay and then um he helped me he took my this 260 form he said that's why i'm i'm not being called for interview for the last interview so he went to the console he say that my d 260 is with me and he gave it to them for, for me to be to be called and then he gave it to them but they still not calling me until last <laughs> I was worried because they say there is no applicant there because they're going to cut off for lunchtime. And then the guy asked me, have you called for interview? And I said, no. And then 
so he has to tell them that I, I'm not uh, interview yet and then so the last I'm the last my interview is supposed to be with 6 30 a.m. and I am being interviewed 12 so for interview experience it was a little bit nervous because like he asked everything about my husband house and all that stuff and he always asked me why my husband didn't visit me again after the marriage and I was like it was pandemic that it has COVID and he say it is not valid reason for me <laughs> that made me like what and then So I have to find something. I say because of the financial, it costs a lot to stay here in Philippines. And it costs a lot to process my papers, my ticket, and answer that he a little bit calm down. And maybe he accepted it a little bit. I have to find deeper and reasonable answer because he he cut me off like no 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 it's not a it's not a reasonable for me but thanks god i passed that interview that was just the question like, like when he tell me no it's not reasonable it's not acceptable but the rest is just about where my husband live and about when we it when our wedding you have to memorize all the stuff because i overheard someone's also because you know i was sitting there for that long because i was sitting there for like 7 till 12 so i, I overheard a lot of things okay so one of that was like 30 applicant that they forget about a year they married at this year and then they met at this year and they married first before they met and the console was like, it doesn't make sense the year that it was mixed up they just panic I guess and that's something that you really have to put in your mind and don't panic because it's hard to <laughs> being refused failed for that interview because there's a lot of waiting there's a lot of waiting like when you apply for visa you waiting that much already and for that interview if you fail the interview um, there's another more waiting that you have to wait so um, my advice is just don't panic pray <laughs> i prayed a lot and it helped guys and so after the interview thanks god i being approved i'm being i passed the interview so my husband worried about me because like imagine 6 30 a.m was my interview time and my 12 p.m. I'm not I he didn't hear anything about me so he say uh, he was worried and he say that maybe I'm upset and um, I didn't want to talk to him and all the stuff and so when I finally get to talk to him and say what happened and we were happy uh, <laughs> I was having a sleepless night I, I think well I sleep like two to three hours just that so I was really tired going for an interview <laughs> and waited for that long uh, yeah it wasn't easy for me uh, it wasn't 
it was not an easy experience but I made it yeah. because of the help of God and it was worth it okay so that was my experience we all have different experience but I just want to share what happened to my interview my advice is just don't panic and pray just um, not memorize all the stuff but like they just when you meet uh, when you get married or how many times you meet and how old is he where he lives and all that stuff so the next rise what's the color of his car and all the stuff so you have just know your husband or fiance about his house how many rooms yeah he asked me about that so um the one thing just don't panic listen breathe <laughs> breathe in and out and pray a lot that's all guys a good luck to your interview and i hope this made you more prepared and more aware for your upcoming uh interview good luck and god bless you oh love you bye